Oof. All right, let's move on to the Los Angeles Chargers. Dylan, you're going to get your chance here. The Chargers added quite like a lot this offseason to their defense, making it a very scary looking defense. What defender are you actually most looking forward to seeing in Chargers camp this year? Yeah, they did add a lot. They added J.C. Jackson, Khalil Mack, J.T. Woods even in the secondary. But I'm all aboard Drew Tranquil. Keep a close eye on Drew Tranquil. I mean, Kenneth Pur- Kenneth Murray's on the pup list right now. Um, they got st- they got a stout defense, right? But the linebackers kind of the question mark. They lost Kazir White, who led the team in tackles last year. You get and in, in Drew Tranquil's a great open field tackle or ap- open field tackler. Uh, Kyle Van Noy's role they brought him in, sort of unclear. He can play outside, si- kind of inside. Troy Reader comes over. Uh, he played with Staley in the Rams days. They were both over there. But Tranquil started a career high seven games last year, had 76 tackles, one and a half sacks even. But I, I think he's a great addition to this defense. And I know he's been there a, a few years. But I, I think what he can bring to your team, he's he's a nice, good tackling, like I mentioned, great open field tackler. But I do question his durability. He had two ACL tears in 10 months in college, blew out his ankle in 2020. But I, I'm saying Drew Tranquil is someone you want to watch on this defense, and he can make that next step as a great linebacker. Yeah, we saw we saw last year where we we do we, the Chargers need this linebacking group to step up for them to get to the next level. Like that is, I feel like their key to moving past the either not making the playoffs or not being able to be on like that Chiefs level or maybe now now what it could be the Raiders level too that linebacking group you saw in that end the end of the game against the Raiders that took the Chargers out of the playoffs Josh Jacobs is running all over and we talked about Brandon it was Brandon Staley's play calling or this and that it came down to Josh Jacobs and that Raiders offense just running all over them so they're going to need a guy like Drew Tranquil to step up and and the rest of their defense to make plays to be able to get them to that next level to me the biggest thing to me, the biggest thing for the Chargers, honestly, is going to be for their defense is going to be what it's been for the past five, six years. Can you stay healthy? Almost every year going into the season, I look at this defense and I'm like, damn, man, they have some studs. Like back when they had Casey Hayward, like Jason Verrett, like they were prepared on defense. And then everyone gets an ACL tear before the damn season starts. <laughs> Erwin James goes out again. If they can stay healthy, like on paper, this is almost always preseason, one of the better defenses in the league. Then they get hurt, and the guys behind them can't step up to the level of the talent they have at the starter section. So they added a lot. This is on paper. This is a scary defense. If they can stay healthy. They've done a lot on this entire roster, honestly, to make sure they are in contest in contention in one of the hardest divisions in the NFL. Um, I'm on kind of on the other coin there. I I, I think that they're always overhyped. I, I've never felt like the Chargers were a super talented defense. We you mentioned the guys that are super talented. Bosa, Derwin James, yeah. Casey Hayward was good. Verrett was good for when a they year were there. Or two. When they were there, but, though, but, but like, that's what I mean. Like, that was like three, four years ago, what right? What we're talking about isn't the star players; it's the yeah. rest of the defense. You got three or four guys. That's great, but they've always been soft. That's been the Chargers' problem. They're soft defense. And you talk about the linebackers. I don't think this is even a linebacker question in the NFL. What makes a great linebacker? It's not a guy that can just go in there and wreak havoc. Yeah, that, that's nice. It's being able to get to the ball, right? How do you get to the ball? The guys up front take the offensive line and eliminate them so they can't get to the next level and actually block those linebackers. To me, the offseason move, the thing I'm directly looking at is Austin Johnson, Sebastian Joseph Day, Christian Covington, Otito Ogbonio, Ogbonia. Those guys, three brand new guys there in Otito, Austin Johnson, and Sebastian Joseph Day. To take pressure off of those linebackers after losing an Ochenna Nwosu, and you get guys like a, a Kenneth Murray and Drew Tranquil, you need those guys to be able to roam free and make tackles. Most linebackers in the NFL have the athletic ability, the ability to go make plays, can run sideline to sideline, and make tackles if they don't have 300-pound linemen in their face. Those are the ones that can shed those 300 linemen and may still make tackles. Those are the Michael Parsons, the you know Devin Whites, the special guys. These guys need to be free and be able to make tackles. Those interior defensive linemen cannot get pushed two yards off the ball like they were last year. That's why Josh Jacobs was running for six yards without being touched. They have to be more physical. And I look directly at Brandon Staley. He's a defensive-minded guy. He brought He's bringing a defensive-minded coach over there. And he's been focused on 
How can I make Justin Herbert better? How can I go for it on fourth downs? He needs to stop all that. He needs to focus on the defense, get Khalil Mack and the new guys over there to buy in and make that defense more physical. I don't think it's about talent. I think they need to be more physical. They need to play with a meaner attitude. And then I think you see the Chargers take a step forward. And if their defense gets right, this is a Super Bowl caliber team. That's why I looked at the linebacker position. You brought, you mentioned the defensive line, right? And then they, they drafted Jerry Tillery a few years ago, but they weren't getting any push. They mentioned the physicality. They weren't getting any push. But that's why I think you should – that's why I think when you go to look at one person, I mean, you've already got Kenneth Murray on the pup and it could be something. He's got an ankle. They don't know his timeline right now. They don't know when he's going to come back. I think you have to look at that linebacker depth. And you're putting Drew Tranquil, who's been a primarily special teams guy the last two years. That's got to be the one guy you look at on that defense. Plus, I got a soft spot for the guy. Fort Wayne, Indiana, Carroll High School, Notre Dame football. I- I'm closer to him than Jesse Bates, so that's how I feel. <laughs> oh, my. See him at the bowling alley? Is that what it is? He's not at the bowling alley. No, baseball fields? Nothing? I will talk to you guys in personality after the show. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go one more thing on this Chargers on the offensive side of the ball. We just talked about the trenches now on the Chargers side. Trenches for the offense. Right tackle. AJ, what's that battle looking like in Los Angeles? Yeah, this uh this right line last year was abysmal. Like they had Storm Norton over there. It was way more of a tropical depression. Tied for second in the league. Oh nine sacks allowed <laughs> just getting beat up over and over again and it was a big part of why justin herbert even having the year he had imagine what he could have done if he wasn't on the ground that often thanks to storm norton but now that left side on the other hand was a whole different story and this year i think storm norton is going to be pushed to the back and you're looking at a guy like trey pipkins who can come in and possibly take over played pretty decent for him last year but not to the point where he's the automatic plug-in, which is okay because now they've got a guy like Jamari Slayer, the guy out of Georgia, 6'3", 331, ready to come in bulldoze. He's more of a guard-style guy. And what I like about that is they've already got their right guard in Zion Johnson. And if you look deeper to why they drafted him, now this line can become more versatile. So you got your center in Ryan Lindsley. You got your guy in um, uh, Rashawn Slater, who was a plug-and-play left tackle. Their guard, uh, Feitler, if I'm not, let, me, let me not do that. <laughs> he got your left yeah, guard. Fire. Fire. Who could, yeah, who you can now, who can play all over the line. So now if you can move him to right tackle, you have Jamari Slayer on the left guard, and now you have four or five guys that you can trust to be a unit. And even if the Zion Johnson being young, we know he's talented and ready to go. This is a line you feel a lot better at. You don't have to force a Pipkins mm-hmm. or a Storm Norton back in there until, you know, unfortunately there's injury problems or something of that nature. So if Jamari Slayer can come along, if Trey Pipkins can prove that he can be a rotational piece, this line, it won't even be a patchwork. You actually feel really good about the movement you can make on this line to make sure week in and week out you have solid trenches to protect Justin Herbert on side of his back-to-back MVP wannabe campaign. Just saying. Just saying. Jamari Salyer, uh, not Slayer. But Slayer sounds so uh, much well, better. Cool. And, and Corey Lindsay. Corey Lindsay. Lindsay. Did I say uh, Ryan? Yes. Yeah, uh, but I, I actually do think Jamari Salyer is going to end up being their right guard, and I think Zion Johnson will eventually be their right tackle. That's just my opinion. I think that's what gives them the most versatility and the best when you have those bookends to protect the quarterback because uh, I do think Jamari Salyer will end up making a push. But, yeah, uh, just had to correct AJ He on should definitely change his name to Slayer. It sounds way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Corey right needs to be Ryan. That's what we're, we're all we're yeah. changing. We're, that's what's happening. Changing uh, all the names. That's how they do it. Yeah. <laughs>